Hey y'all, Chuck here. Hey, it's time for another weekly question and answer uh, update uh, this week here in Tapanong, Thailand. I could stay like this forever following you. Just don't get too far and I'll be right where you are. got quite a few. I accidentally threw it away. I thought it was an old one. <laughs> it's okay, it's still good. But I got quite a few questions to, uh, to answer. Uh, if I miss some of them, I'm sorry. Uh, it's been a long week. Uh, just ask me again. Uh, some of the new ones, uh, just haven't had a chance to really get to, your, to answering them, but I will next week. Um, let's start off with number one from Smiley the Feral Cat. Uh, asked uh, for some reason if a farang, a farang is deported, uh, but the funds are not there for the plane ticket home. What happens in this case? Uh, are they detained in jail? Uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, what happened? Well, let's start off with saying this. Typically, people get deported because they've overstayed their visa. Uh, whatever kind of visa that might be. So uh, let's say, for instance, you overstayed your visa. The best way to handle this uh, without going to jail uh, is take out 20,000 baht, um, go buy a plane ticket uh, back to your home, um, get a lawyer, head down to the uh, immigration office, with your lawyer and your plane ticket showing that you're going to be out of the country within 24 hours and your 20,000 baht, uh, apologize and uh, usually, usually there's no issues. Uh, uh, but it's 20,000 baht, uh, bring a lawyer to make sure it stays 20,000 baht uh, plus whatever it costs him. So um, if you, for whatever reason, if, well, if you, if you're Committing a crime, yeah, you're going to go to jail for sure. Uh, but if you're just caught for overstay and uh, you get deported, well, first off, they do detain you. Uh, you're allowed to get a lawyer. Um, you are then transported to the jail at the airport. Uh, once you have acquired a plane ticket back home, um, then you can go. The fine, uh, if you get caught in that circumstance, is 800,000 baht uh, for you to go back home, plus whatever it costs for your lawyer. So, uh, Ameri in Amer the American Embassy, for instance, uh, if you don't have the funds to pay the fine and get the plane ticket, uh, they will handle all that for you by trying to get funds from family, friends, or relatives, whoever uh, list of people that you give them. Uh, if you have none of the above, then you will sign a loan agreement with the embassy. I think this works with most Western embassies. Uh, you will sign a loan agreement with them and they will handle it for you and you will go back home. If you get deported, uh, in most cases, uh, you're allowed to come back into Thailand. They don't uh, forbid you from coming back. Um, if you commit a crime, most likely you are banned forever for coming back to Thailand as a foreigner. So, anyway, uh, hope that answers your question. Uh, I'm sure there are some other circumstances that people may know about, but this is the common law and the common rule of thumb. Uh, depending on your circumstance, things can change and where you're from. Uh, 
Chihaksen, or Chihaksen, I'm not sure, the Thai word, maybe he's trying to say the Thai word Chu, which is name, uh, Chihaksen, asked uh, if, uh, if he was to try to renovate a house, uh, what would the initial procedure be uh, about a design, and um, like in Top Phnom, like in my area, uh, and uh, it should that be submitted to the district authorities for approval? Uh, yeah, if you, let's just take this house for instance, uh, a long time ago it was a wooden house, so it cost them, uh, the fees still are about the same here. Uh, it's $8,000 to have somebody draw up a blueprint. Uh, well, they left the bathroom. You do have to go and uh, bring this blueprint and get approval uh, to build it and get a permit. So it's about 8,000 baht for the permit, I mean for the blueprint, but the permit as of right now doesn't cost anything in this area. But uh, yeah, you still have to show what you're doing. You can't just demolish a, a wooden house and then have start building stuff without letting somebody know. Uh, Paul Duffy said if I didn't answer his question, he was going to shoot me. Hmm. <laughs> Paul Duffy asked, uh, what time do we go to bed at night? Okay, that, that was an important question, <laughs> Paul. But I, I get up at 6, Paige gets up about 5.30, but we usually are in bed by 8.30. There's not a lot of stuff happening in this town that want to keep us up late. Um, I usually just take care of some uh, YouTube stuff and, and Paige watches YouTube. We don't really watch much TV, um, but uh, there's, there is a nightlife out here, but it's, it's all Thai people and yeah, I'm not really into it. So we go to bed about 8.30 and we're up about uh, 5.30, 6 o'clock. Go to bed early. Everybody's, her mom's up at 4, banging and shit all over. So yeah, we hear her downstairs at 4. Fleming Jensen from Denmark. Hey, Fleming from Denmark. Asked, uh, why don't I hang out with Thai men? Uh, on most of my videos, I'm always on tour with the women. Uh, yeah, I really don't hang out with too many people. Um, I never really was, uh, even back home, never really hung out with too many people friends all the time. I'm not antisocial. I just never really hung out with too many people, but I like to travel. Uh, seems like the group that's always with us is women. The men are working, and uh, when they do want to travel, they don't want to stay longer than two days, and I'm not doing that. I'm not going to rush on the other side of Thailand. Uh, and then spend a day and then rush back. It's just not happening for me. But most of the men are working, so I'm just the women want to go. But uh, I do have some male friends here. I do have some Thai male friends here. I don't really hang out much. It's mostly my fault uh, because I don't, I can't communicate, and it bothers me personally that I can't go across the street to the guy and say, "Hey, let's go fishing," because he'd go, "Okay," and, and we'd go fishing. Uh, and we wouldn't be talking much anyway, but I want to be able to learn Thai fluently to be able to converse because, you know, I have a lot of questions and I talk a lot. So but we're meeting up with some friends with Brian and uh, P. Chai, which is another guy. So it'll be three guys hanging out with the women. <laughs> Chris Serku, I have yet to see any body shops around. Just wondering, are, are there... There's not a major body shop here. There's shops and they have like bumpers and you know plastic bumpers and stuff hanging around. And they do like general mechanic stuff. Uh, and they have a body shop like out in the backyard and they paint. Not really a body shop here. Now, in the towns uh, 45 kilometers from us, uh, Muktahan and, and the Kompanom have big body shops, big dealerships. Uh, so on and so forth. I probably wouldn't take my car here um, to get it fixed anyway, but it's my personal preference. 
the busy bug karen i see your your uh, channel's taken off pretty good karen congratulations on your youtube channel asked uh, why do you call your mother-in-law soy mafia and what does that mean yeah we uh we i was you know western people me especially, we especially, we overthink everything. We've got to know details. We've got to know everything. Thai people aren't like that. They don't. Uh, they don't worry about stuff like like we do. We overthink. We want. We got to know the right information, or you know, it's going to be a catastrophe. It's just the way we are, I think. And if we don't know it, we feel stupid. Uh, but. Uh, I was stressed out about getting my extension on my visa uh, because some things didn't work out like I thought it should or what I was told that the way it should be. Uh, and at that time, I didn't realize, you know, in Thailand, uh, it's like luck of the draw or, you know, you, you go in and you get one answer and then you go in the next day and you get another answer. It's just the way that it is in Thailand. Uh, and I was stressed out about that, you know, being, <laughs> this is my home now. I don't have a home back in the States. I've got rid of everything. So I don't want to be all of a sudden like, okay, crap, what do I do now? I got to go back home because of some BS that I didn't know about. So anyway, I was stressed. And uh, my mother-in-law seen for a few days that there was something going on with me. And uh, she figured out a way in to tell me in English not to worry about it. She says, don't worry about it, I got this. She goes, uh, I'm the soy mafia, I'll take care of everything, don't worry about it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that meant a lot to me, so. But that's what, uh, that's what she said, and it made me feel better, and it just kind of stuck. And uh, everybody in the neighborhood considers her as uh, the boss, <laughs> so. She's like the pit bull. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's all fun and games, though. It's nothing, nothing serious. Rio, Rio for me forever says uh, he has traveled extensively all over Central and South America, and it seems that every place has bars on the windows, doors, and fences with razors. So what is crime like in Thailand, and how safe would it be uh, to leave my home unoccupied for months at end uh, for travel? Months on end for travel. Um, Thailand safe, uh, really is. It, you know, just like any, in any country, if you live in a, a metropolitan area in a city, you want to lock everything up. Uh, everything's locked up in Bangkok. Uh, Pattaya has... Uh, some crime too. But as a general, Thailand is extremely safe. I have a lot of friends here that don't lock their house. Uh, they're, here, here's the thing is they're not really worried too much about the things that they have in their house. Uh, Thai people aren't really materialistic. So there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of crime where people want to steal your stuff because they really don't for the most part care about your stuff. Uh, they don't really care too much about fancy things. If they steal it, it's because they're they need the money. They're desperate for money, or, or so. I, I watch the news three times a day. There are thefts here, and they're usually stupid things. Uh, uh, people on drugs, uh, and uh, people that are something's happened to them, uh, a bad misfortune, and they have to. They feel like they have to steal. It's the only way to do it. But uh, there's not a lot of theft in Thailand. I don't know. We have bars on our windows upstairs because uh, this is a business here and they don't want somebody coming in taking and stealing their stuff. But you can easily jump up on the roof and come through the house. Uh, all their stuff that they want to keep secure is locked up in a safe and bolted to the ground. So uh, any valuables that you have here in Thailand, you want to do that anyway so uh, keep them in a safe. I don't know. They really don't care much about it. Uh, no matter where I lived in, in America, uh, I didn't feel I didn't feel safe. We lived in a gated community, and somebody jacked up in the middle of the night, jacked up my truck. I had a Toyota Tundra, 
and uh, it came with nice wheels on it. And in the middle of the night, they, somebody came, took my landscaping bricks, put them, jacked up my truck, stole all four of my wheels, and left them on my own landscaping bricks in my own front yard. Uh, but it was happening a lot in our neighborhood. But we had a lot of little theft problems. There's theft everywhere, but out here, I don't, I don't worry about it. And there's, I don't own anything that I'm really so possessed about and my stuff that I really care my documents and stuff like that I keep them locked up in the safe it would take a lot for somebody to take it anyway if you decide to move to Thailand you'll have to change your name from Rio for me forever hmm. <laughs> Zekester asked uh, if I was on Twitter I'm not on Twitter I don't know anything about Twitter um, I don't know I feel like I don't have time to take care of my people on Facebook. I don't know. Daryl Rowland asked, uh, why is the food there spicier than normal? I guess you're talking about here in Isan. Um, it's just like anywhere in the world, uh, which I haven't traveled to Europe much. But um, in America, for example, to me, anything above New Mexico, the food is plain. Um, we were, when we were traveling around the United States, we had to find like Indian food to try to get anything with some flavor. But in Thailand, it's the same. Isan food uh, is spicy for the most part. And in southern uh, provinces in Thailand, it's, it's really spicy there too. And. Uh, don't know 100%, I can't get an answer on why, if there is even is an answer, but the most logical explanation was there's not a lot of tourists uh, in Isan, there's not a lot of tourists down south, uh, you know, past Phuket and all that. So normally the food is hot anyway, but when you get into places like Chiang Mai, you get into places like Phuket and Pattaya and Bangkok, it's not spicy. It has a sweet flavor to me. It's just not appealing to me, but uh, it's the same flavor that you would get back home in your States. Uh, in Isan, it's just spicier. Now, you can order it not spicy, um, which means if they have a dish that's, dish not, that's not already prepared, uh, they'll just put a little bit of pepper in there, not much. But you can't ask for it not spicy. A lot of foods are already prepared, like soups and stuff. They already have the seasonings in it, and it's difficult to get them not spicy. I love spicy food. I really do. I can't eat a raw Thai chili pepper, but I love it in my food. Dennis Dixon wants to know if fentanyl, sorry, fentanyl patches uh, for for pain, uh, for chronic pain are available here in Thailand. Um, I did do some research for you, Dennis, and uh, it is available. Uh, opioids are uh, only prescription drugs here in Thailand. Uh, you won't be able to find these uh, at pharmacies that are legit. Uh, it's really against the law for a pharmacist uh, a pharmacy to sell that to opioids here in Thailand you have to go get it at a hospital so that being said uh, there's not a lot of pain uh, specialists here in Thailand there are some in Bangkok though uh, I read some stuff where um, the patches were more expensive than they could get back in the UK um, and Australia but they do make a generic version here now it's called GPO um, it's supposed to be uh, very inexpensive but you can only get this with a prescription at the in, in the doc in the hospital pharmacy in Bangkok but they do offer that here how much it is I don't know I can't tell you uh, to me if it's a little bit more money than back home okay how much does it cost your everyday life back home compared to paying a little bit of money here? So it's the same as buying a Jiffy peanut butter or something like that. It's a little, a little bit more expensive because it's, it's a, it has to be shipped over here. Anyway, they have that. Uh, Brian says he heard that recently 
immigration officers are now asking foreigners to show that they have at least 20,000 baht in cash, uh, or there's a chance that they could be denied entry. Um, I have a friend who is an immigration officer, uh, retired here. Uh, we have a couple friends in the family that are, that are retired. I have a whole lot of people I communicate online that are here um, for different types of visas. So I'm going to try to answer your question the best way I can. So, yes, this could happen, and the only way it could happen normally is if you are uh, just trying to get a re-entry permit because you're uh, doing a border run, and you have about 20 re-entry stamps in your uh, passport. <laughs> Um, I got the door open because sometimes there's a bad echo in here, but the weather's nice, so I get some fresh air. Uh, but it's really noisy outside, or I would have did the video outside. Anyway, sorry, I got sidetracked with some loud noise. But um, if you've got like 20 re-entry stamps, they know what you're doing. They know what you're doing. So the question for the immigration officer, and now they're getting more stricter on people coming in here that are... Uh, I guess a, to them it's what they say is like a burden to their society. They want people here with money. Uh, they offer incentives for people with a lot of money to get a special elite visa and stuff like that. But they know what you're doing. So if you're coming into Thailand, they want to see that you have the cash. Okay? They don't want you coming in here and working illegally or doing illegal stuff. So they want to see 20000 but uh, before they say, okay, fine, you got money. Uh, they know what you're doing. Uh, fine. But I've never heard anybody coming over here on a tourist visa with a plane ticket that shows that they're going back home after 30 days um, ask for any, any kind of cash. Um, I've never heard of anybody at the immigration uh, getting getting asked for that kind of money. I didn't. I made several trips back and forth. Um, I've never been asked that. I've been across the border uh, and back in a vehicle. I still have never been asked that. Um, I think it just depends on what that immigration officer, if he looks in your book and sees that you're uh, doing this every every 30, 60 days, then uh, they're gonna they're gonna want to know why. Uh, there are some people here that are doing it. Okay, here's the here's the thing about that. If you don't twenty thousand baht, are you coming to Thailand on vacation without six hundred bucks to your name? <laughs> they have ATM machines that close by. Go draw out twenty thousand baht and say, here you go. It's really not a big deal, right? Twenty thousand baht. I, you can't go anywhere in the world. Uh, I mean, you got a 30-day stamp. You don't have 600 bucks. Then you're coming here doing stuff that they don't want you to do. Uh, and it's gonna. It, they're really getting more strict on that, and it's coming to an end for people that are that can't afford to be here. Um, and uh, yeah, they're gonna send you back home permanently. But. If you have, if you're making border runs, which a lot of people do, because they want to be in Thailand, these people have money, so it's no big deal to show them, hey, I got twenty thousand baht. Yeah, no problem. Okay, here you go. You know, as long as you're spending money in Thailand and you're not a burden to society. Uh, we took a trip to uh, Vietnam from here. Uh, we went with some Lao friends. Dealing with the Lao immigration was no problem. When I got to Vietnam, there was five Thai people and me. I had to get a visa to go over there just to spend three days in Vietnam and come back. They were just, they couldn't understand why I didn't have a bus ticket or I didn't have a plane ticket. They wanted to see a plane ticket. Why am I coming to Vietnam? Am I coming there to live there? What am I going to, why? So, Finally, they, they wanted to see a thousand U.S. dollars, <laughs> and somehow we came up with a. We had a thousand U.S. dollars. That ain't like I could go to an ATM and get it. It was like you have to have a thousand, or we're not giving you the visa. 
Well, in Laos, they do use a lot of American dollars, so our friends have cash with them, and in Vietnam, they use American dollar. So between what I had, my wife, and my Lao friends, we had a thousand bucks together, got my stamp banned. So it happens. The immigration officer's like, I don't see why are he couldn't understand that I live that I was on vacation at the time I was on vacation in Thailand. Why do I wanna how did I get there? So if anyway, next time we go to Vietnam it's easier just to fly over to the airport, deal with the immigration in the airport, have a good time and then fly back. Anyway, that's the way we're going to do it next time. That's about it. Uh, I hope that wasn't too long of an explanation for you. Um, I have a, a lot of people who responded back to me on the uh, <laughs> on the border jumping. It's a lot of stuff I don't want to get into, get into about other other uh, other bloggers. But but anyway. Uh, yeah, that's about it, guys. If I missed your question again, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll answer it next week. Thank you a lot for all the wonderful comments, uh, the suggestions, uh, all the new subscribers. Um, yeah, we'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.